ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Welcome in on this Monday, June 20th. It is West Virginia Day, so happy birthday, West Virginia. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We are taking your phone calls this hour, 877-420-TALK. That is 877-420-8255. Now our text line is open for you as well. You can do that at 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. It is West Virginia Day, 159 years of not being Virginia. So take some pride in that today. And, of course, all right, we're going to get your phone calls in, as I mentioned, and your text. Again, the phone line is 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. And the text line is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. If I'm in the SEC right now, I got to be feeling pretty scared if I'm not Ole Miss. Because we saw earlier today that Maya Stevenson, the career hit leader, home run hit leader there, career home run leader for Marshall University, going to play at Ole Miss. If I'm in the SEC right now, I'm thinking, man. She's going to be tough. I bet a lot of people pitch away from her just because her reputation will probably precede her. So she's heading to the SEC. It's a a huge loss for Marshall softball. There's no denying that. I hope she does well in the SEC only because that will kind of give some credence and credibility to Marshall softball. She does well against SEC opponents. That's going to say something. I can't blame Maya for wanting to take the opportunity, but at the same time, it'd have been nice to have one of your best all-time weapons going into the Sun Belt. So she's heading to Ole Miss, and of course, a lot of people were heading to play for the herd on the football side of things. Now, we'll talk about that in a little bit with the transfer portal because there are a lot of commits I want to get into here with football and. Things are coming along quite nicely for football, by the way. Have you seen the turf? Have you been following the tweets? It looks pretty good. It pops. Christian Spears, athletic director, Marshall University, he says it's going to pop. And boy, does it pop. It looks better in real life, I think, than the graphic. It looks way better in real life. If the graphic didn't sell you on it, it looks way, way better physically. That Marshall and the end zone just really stand out. The herd logo looks really strong in in the center. The 75 stands out on the sidelines. So it looks really nice. Nice and fresh. It's gonna be it's gonna be nice when you get into the schedule. When you watch it on TV, it's going to look really good. So updates, of course, have been coming. The one thing that I've seen people complain about, the one thing, it's still not centered right. That 50-yard line, still not, it's just off a little bit. You know where the seats go, 50? Well, the center line, it's just, it's not center all the way. Have you noticed that? Is it just me? I've seen a few other people talk about that. Well, again, you know, it's all anecdotal on social. Maybe just a couple people noticed it, and I picked up on it as well. But yeah, it's still not center. I don't know what you can do to, to make that. I would love it to be center. I'm not going to say, hey, by the way, you should really redo that. Maybe next time. Maybe we'll get them next time. So, again, I don't know if they're going to use the end zone, by the way. Ultimately, that's going to look like. You know, maybe in the next round of returfing there, you can do that a little bit. You know, maybe you can center it a little bit so you can readjust a couple of things. Can you, you don't have that much to play with in the end zone because, of course, you got the street. You know, it goes right to where you legally can. You can't go for much further than that. You'd have to actually do away with the street, take that out. I don't think you can get away with that. So you're right where you have to be. 
property-wise. So I don't know what you could possibly do, how much you'd have to move over, what sort of spacing you really need. But that's the one thing that a few people have said. And I'm like, yeah, they still haven't got that centered. Do we care? Will it be a big factor on game day? Are we going to look at it on game day and go, man, that field looks great, but it's not center? Or is that just something because, well, again, it's the dog days of summer. We don't have really much to get into until we get into the actual week-to-week of football. So, yeah, we're going to nitpick it a little bit. But, no, I I actually think the turf looks great. It's going to be nice. I hope that there's more to come. New signage. I'd like to see some different signage around the stadium as well. Not just on the outside, but the inner level as well. I mean, what can you do? Do you put ribbon board there just all around? Would that be nicer? What can you do? I'd like to see in future renovations those chairbacks, you know, make them. Would you do black chairbacks or would you do Kelly Green chairbacks? Think about that one. Would you chair back it with green, Kelly Green, or would you chair back it with black? What would you do? There you go. Here's another thought. Again, I don't know how much of this you could really get away with because you would lose some seating capacity unless you make up for it somewhere else. But what if eventually you, you created more value for those seats but chair back everything? Every seat's chair back. Just down the line, think about, okay, how can we create some value for the for the real estate we have? Create some value because it's a supply and demand issue. If there's more demand than there's supply, there's value, a little bit more value. Well, hey, I better get my ticket now. Might not be enough. And, of course, winning hopefully will cure all of that. But what if you chair back that place? Again, these are just things in my mind. The gears always are turning. What can you do? Can you chair back that a little bit? Would you chair back the end zone, the party deck, whatever that's going to be? Again, you know, what the super size scoreboard is going to look like here, it's going to completely change the, the stadium look. Would you elevate the scoreboard on the shoey? Instead of having it on the shoey, would you have a scoreboard above the shoey? Think about that. Instead of that block M on the shoey, which I don't know if I like that to begin with on the shoey. I thought maybe above the shoey would be, you got to figure out what you can do structurally, though, of course. You just can't tack something on without making sure that it works. But I always thought a scoreboard above the shoey would be better. And maybe you could do that, and maybe you could have a smaller version of your Herdzillatron. By the way, I am trademarking that right now, Herdzillatron. That is my phrase for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to Christian Spears hopefully this week. He said he'd come on again. We'll do Friday maybe uh, when baseball is a little bit more solidified. There, we'll bring that up. Herdzillatron. Maybe I can get that. We're copyright that right now. Christian, our intern, get that. Get me a trademark on that right now. Heard Zilla Tron. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it from now. That's my word for it. I'm calling it when it's built. The Heard Zilla Tron. I don't know if Christian would appreciate that. Maybe he's got his own nickname for it. But Heard Zilla Tron is what we're calling it from this point forward. When it's built, it's the Heard Zilla Tron. All right, what do we got to get into today? Well, we've got. A lot of football camp talk about. The herd got bigger. Steph Curry popped with another championship. Steph Curry once again made himself known on the Charles Huff feed. Dropping threes, rainbows all over the place. So just when you see Steph pop up on your timeline, you know something's happening. So we'll get into some of the, the offers that were made. We will look ahead to tonight's action in the Stanley Cup. Game three coming up tonight. We've got it for you on our sister station, Cat Sports 93-3 and 1340. I'm hoping game three is better than game two because let me tell you, it was not pretty. 
Game two was terrible. Unless you are a Colorado Avalanche fan, and guess what? We have a Colorado Avalanche fan in the building. So for him, it was glorious. For the Tampa Bay Lightning fan, uh, he's not a real fan anyway. So I'm not worried about his feelings. More coming up. We'll get into that. We'll look ahead to baseball. Some good news coming out of baseball today. Uh, Tony Kemper's been busy again. So we'll talk about uh, his additions to the staff. All that's coming up. Your phone calls and texts as well. This is The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Do you like the show and you want to make your own? Well, let me tell you about Anchor. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episodes. The possibilities are endless for what you can create. Now, Anchor is going to distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast. No minimum listenership needed. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, June 20th edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Coach Huff has been pretty busy. Football camps this past weekend. Looks like, once again, a success for the Thundering Herd. Probably got to show off a little bit of that turf as well. Again, that thing was really, really popping. When Christian Spears said, it's going to pop, I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's going to look really nice. No, that thing really, really popped. And if I'm a if I'm a kid, I'm coming in for camp, and I'm seeing that, it's like, wow, that looks pretty sharp. You kids see with their eyes. They do. They well, Obviously, they see with their eyes, but they also buy in with their eyes. I realized what I was saying. They see with their eyes. Yeah. You know, and, and other news, uh, they hear with their ears, and they, they smell with their nose. No, oh, kids buy with their eyes. They, they see and buy with their eyes. They look at, oh, hey, that's pretty nice. This Marshall place has got it going on. And then they meet Coach Huff, and they're like, oh, I'm in. So a lot of tweets going out. Steph Curry goes out there on Coach Huff's timeline. So when Steph is out there, you know the herd's doing it right. Joshua Switzer, he's a safety nickel from North Carolina, class of 2023. Tweeting out the offer. Isaiah Marshall, four-star quarterback from Detroit, Michigan. He has 19 Division I offers, and he is in that class of 2024. So, working ahead. Deshaun, this is going to be a tough one for me here. I'm hoping I don't butcher this. Iainer, we're going to go with that for right now. Iainer. He is uh, the class of 2025. He's six foot, 165 pounder, wide receiver, defensive back. He's from Detroit, Michigan. So uh, I hope I've got it right. We'll uh, we'll work on that. Uh, Keegan Sack from George Washington High School. You know him, class of 2025, running back, wide receiver. He'll he'll return some punts for you as well. And Diore Herbert, class of 2024. He's a running back out of Ohio. So these are some of the potential additions to the Thundering Herd. And then, of course, transfer portal cometh and giveth. Defensive lineman Joe Murray transferring into the Herd. He is a 6'4 young man. He recorded 21 tackles, 9 sacks for Bowie State in his red shirt freshman season last year. So he has got an opportunity to come in and play for the Herd now. So good day for camps, good day for the Thundering Herd. And, of course, how many of these kids actually make it to Marshall? We don't know. But the fact that we're talking about kids in the 23 class, the 24 class, the 25 class, when's the last time we really talked about that? No offense to Doc Holliday, but we are light years ahead of where we're at as far as knowing about which kid is interested in the herd. And that's just generating excitement. That's the kind of excitement that you can see 
with the program is when these kids are excited to come in. They're a few years out, and they're excited. They're meeting with Coach. Coach is building some relationships with them, and they're getting offers. And a lot of these kids will say yes, ultimately, and make it to Huntington. So shout out to Coach Huff. Uh, he's really generated a lot of interest in martial football with these young players, and uh, I think he's done a fantastic job as far as really without saying too much, generating this excitement. Because, again, his timeline's fun. On social media, if you're not on Twitter and you're not following him, uh, he's fun to follow. Positive, always. When you see Steph Curry out there, you know something's coming up because he'll retweet stuff too. Just not going to flat out say it, but you'll you'll get the gist of it. So he's a fun follow on social media. And so that's some good stuff there. And, of course, these camps are really we're, – we're feeling like Marshall is out there more and all the time. It just didn't feel that way before. Now, that's not saying that it wasn't that way. It just didn't feel that way before. Now we, we see this stuff. We see a lot of this now. We see what Coach is doing. Coaches are really active. Coaches are on social media. I love Doug Chapman on social media. I love Doug Chapman to begin with. But then on social media, he's fun. So the coaches are more fun on social media as well. So they have personalities. I think that's what Marshall fans have missed, a lot of Marshall fans anyway. Coaches with personalities. And I think the kids relate to that a lot more. The fans are into it. The, the kids relate to it a lot more. These coaches have personalities. There, there are a lot of different coaching styles. Not every coaching style is going to be forward-facing. Some coaches, they come in the morning, they get after it, they grind, they put everything they can into it, and then when they're done, after a long day, they go home and get ready for the grind again. And they don't say a word. You don't see them on social media. And then you have other coaches that come in, grind, and they're having fun on social media. So I think that's what we're seeing with Marshall. And so it's really cool to see all these kids. And again, how many of these kids are coming? How many of these kids are going to go other directions? We don't know. Because after all, are we going to see a kid from the class of 2025 lock in this early? Probably not. Enjoy the recruiting process. All right, we're going to get some of your phone calls and texts, and we'll do that. The phone line is 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. The text line is open, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. More on this edition of The Drive coming up, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Welcome back to the Monday, June 20th edition, The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We'll get your phone calls and texts in this hour. The phone line is 877-420-TALK. The text line 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. And, of course, if you're listening to the show on demand, and you want to reach out, you can find me on Twitter at Paul Swan, and you can leave me a message there, and I will see it and respond to it if I can. And if it's something we can talk about on the show, we will talk about it as well. So you can do that if you're listening to the show real time or if you're listening to us on demand. You can reach out that way. That way you don't feel left out. So if you got something to say and you can't listen to me when I'm talking live, don't feel like you're, you're left out. We got you covered on Twitter, at Paul Swan. I'm on there sometimes. I don't troll as much. I did just a few minutes ago. Uh, I've got a – I'm building on Twitter. I've got a list. I'm working on it as well just to help me. And, of course, I've leave it open so you can subscribe to it as well. It's just to help me. I've got a lot of Sunbelt accounts, and I'm trying to find more because I want to – be able to kind of keep an eye on what's going on in the Sun Belt. You know, just learn a little bit more. Find out about the fans. Find out about the media. Find out about, well, just to get a, a feel for the Sun Belt. You know more about it. And 
Some are really straight up professional journalist. Some are somewhere in the middle between journalist and fan site. Some of them lean way towards fan site. It's a good mix. And it's a fun list to read. And sometimes I'll see things pop up. Like, for example, I was just reading this blog. It was a short blog entry. Is Marshall Thundering Herd really the new darling of the Sun Belt? Yes. Yes, the herd is. The herd's the new darling. Because the athletic director said so. And I'm not going against him. I mean, seriously, that was the vibe he was giving me. So I can't say it's not true. The vibe I was getting from him is, yeah, Marshall's sort of the darling right now. Of course, there's a lot of energy going on here. I don't know if the fans will agree with that. No single fan base is good. Do you think fans from different schools are going to go, oh, yeah, you are the, you guys are the best. You guys are the best. You think you think Appalachian State fans are going to be like, oh, yeah, Marshall, you guys are the darlings right now. We love you. Coastal Carolina, like, yeah, you guys, oh, yeah, go herd. You got, hey. On the outside, hey, welcome to the Sun Belt. Yeah, we're, it's us. We're the cool kids here. You think, you think that's really what some schools are doing? Their fans are like, oh, yeah, totally. You got, it's you. It's totally. You think Southern Miss is like, oh, yeah, it's the herd. Yeah, they were cool when we were hanging out with them in Conference USA. It's the herd. Yeah, we love them. I think Old Dominion's like, oh, yeah, it's definitely Marshall. Huge, yeah. We wouldn't even be here without them. No, no, that's going on. So, I don't know. Is it fair for me to think of Christian Spears as sort of, I don't want to call him a hype man. That's kind of underselling him a little bit. Is he is he more in the vein of a, a wrestling manager? I mean, is he in that vein a little bit? I, I don't know. If I'm off base, you tell me. But I'm kind of feeling like he comes in here, he's feeling good. He's hyping his, he's hyping his school up. He's hyping his program up a little bit. It's like, oh yeah, we're the darling. I mean, when he when he said that to the newspaper, he said that, and I had to go with it. And I love the guy because he'll just tell you what he feels. That's the thing about him; he just tells you what he feels. I'm not saying his filter's broken, but when he told Courtney Hessler, it's like, hey, yeah, um, yeah, we're the darling, you know, in these uh, in these meetings, yeah, we're the darling of the of, of the league. And so when I said, hey, what's this deal here? The darling of the league? And he just started, yeah, he elaborated on that a little bit more. If you missed that, you can go back and get that on demand. Our Christian Spears episode, you can listen to that on the podcast. So is Marshall the darling of the Sun Belt? You tell me. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Or you can text in your reply, 304-396-TALK. 304 396 8255. I'm on Twitter at Paul Swan as well. So, is Marshall the darling of the Sun Belt? Tell me, what do you think? Is Marshall the darling of the Sun Belt? What do you think? Uh, I know this, though, the turf is looking really nice. So, if if you're measuring the darling status based on what's happening, I think Marshall has done a nice job so far transitioning in, taking into this uh, this really, really golden opportunity to maybe get some improvements done, some facilities. Maybe this is going to be the catalyst as well to get that baseball project finally done. By the way, it's, as always, it's 99% until it's 100 Christian Spears uh, is coming back on Friday. We're going to talk about what's happening with baseball. He had some things he couldn't say on air. And, again, I know just by following some of you on social media, you're like, is this thing going to get built? Yeah, it's getting built. I'm saying it right now. It's getting built. Because when I looked at him and talked to him off air, I can see it in his eye. It's getting built. 
That's the confidence I have in him right now. This is still the honeymoon phase, right? You know, when the athletic director's new and you're you're meeting the guy and you're talking to him and you're learning about him and seeing what he does. Yeah, we're still in the honeymoon phase, right? It's getting built. I believe it. Ultimately, it has to be built. It has to be built. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It has to be built. There's no more putting it off. There's no more, we're going to get it done. There's no more empty promises. It's got to get built. Either build it or do away with baseball. That's the only two decisions you have right now. You either get it built or you end baseball. Be done with it. Get rid of baseball. One or the other. No more playing at the YMCA. No more traveling all across the tri-state to find a field to play on. No more of these games being canceled due to light. None of these we play in a high school level baseball field and we're a Division I school. None of that. Either build the stadium or do away with baseball. There's no middle ground for me anymore. Support it or don't. Support it or don't. And I think it's going to get supported. I think you got a guy coming in with the right kind of energy and with a vision and a plan. A vision and a plan. And those things are pretty powerful when you put them together. So it's getting built. Marshall's the darling of the Sun Belt. That's what he said, at least. You can go back and listen to that interview anytime you want to. It's on demand on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. More coming up. It's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. We're taking Paul Swan everywhere. Download or subscribe to The Drive with Paul Swan on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's our final segment of today's edition of The Drive. You can still participate, 877-420-TALK, or you can text in 304 304- 396 talk 304 396 8255 happy west virginia day it's 159 years of not being virginia and we're all excited about that stanley cup final coming up tonight game three of the series with an eight o'clock puck drop we've got it for you coming up 7 30 on our sister station cat sports 93 3 and 13 40 Colorado, two games to none. They blew out the defending champ seven to nothing. Yeah, I spent all this time hyping it up, talking about hockey, how playoff hockey's the best, and then Tampa Bay just lays that lays that egg. They're home now. They were on the road for the first two. So they're home now. They've had a couple of days to get ready for this. Colorado was a better rested team coming in, but if you want to see what a champion's made of, this will be the game to tune into tonight, game three, because they've been down two games to none before last series, and they found a way to win game three. Can they do it again and turn this series around? It's going to be interesting no matter what. Either Colorado is going to be in a tight one or – We're going to see just all-out war. I don't know. But I think it's going to be a better Game 3 than we got for Game 2. It's coming up tonight. Again, that's on our sister station, Cat Sports, 93.3 and 1340. We got baseball action coming up tonight on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. The Pirates are in action. How about those Pirates? Father's Day. Nice to have some baseball on Father's Day. Pirates win 4-3 in yesterday's series finale against the Giants. So they've got the Cubbies tonight. Four-game series. First pitch, 7.05. We've got it for you. 6.40 is our airtime here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 9.30. Speaking of baseball, Marshall Baseball Jr. Luke Edwards named to the NCAA Division I East All-Region second team. That came out today. The American Baseball Coaches Association releasing that. Played and started in 55 games this season. And he finished the season with a 364 batting average. That was tied third best in the league. And he led the herd with 
53 RBI and tied for first with 13 homers. So there's some life in her baseball. Get that stadium built. I think we're going to see a lot of life in baseball. Hey, speaking of baseball, the Dirty Birds are doing it. Doing the right thing. We didn't really get a chance to get into it, but Corey Bird signed with the Dirty Birds last week. And I think that's smart. That is just so smart. One, you got a local kid playing for the Dirty Birds, right? And, of course, you got some Marshall fans that will be there cheering him on, checking it out. And then his last name is Bird. So the Herd signing Bird, and now Bird signing with the Dirty Birds so much. So much synergy there. I mean, that's a 90s word, synergy. I think, is that an early 2000s word? Synergy. Have you even heard that word before, Christian? Synergy? Google it. Go ahead. Google synergy. That was a corporate buzzword back in my days of corporate radio. Synergy. Synergy. Hey, you know, we've got great synergy here. We, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're collaborating. We're, we're, everything's flowing together. We've got such great synergy. So, Bird playing for the Dirty Birds, a former player for the Herd. Say that really fast. Often. Say that really fast. Hey, uh, we got to talk Herd basketball, or Tony Kemper is going to come in here and punch me. Plain and simple. If I don't give Tony Kemper his due, he will come in here and just, I don't know. His his trash talk game was pretty strong when it was uh, Bengals Chiefs, so I'm not ticking Tony Kemper off. No, seriously, though. And again, we like to have fun on Mondays. Monday is more fun than probably we should. But uh, Tony Kemper, great, great guy. And I believe it's, uh, I believe it's Sydney. It's spelled S-Y-D-N-E-I, Sydney McCaskill. She was uh, announced today as uh, an assistant coach. Uh, coach said in his uh, release comments, uh, positive energy, coaching experience, playing experience. She was on the staff at Florida Gulf Coast, so she had a lot of roles there. That'll help the herd. You have to have somebody on your staff that can do a lot of roles. And she also played at Georgia. So she played at Georgia, so she's got some experience playing at a high level, playing at Georgia, and then she's got experience at Florida Gulf Coach, a coast. She's done a lot as far as her career is concerned, both on the court and as a, as a member of the staff. So that's the type of coach you need for Marshall. You can't, you got to have someone that's got, especially for some of these programs, you got to have someone that's got so many different skill sets. So. Congratulations to Coach Kemper for adding to his schedule. I mean, his staff. Uh, it's a tough schedule. So, a um, lot going on for Marshall women's basketball. We'll try to get Coach on sometime here in the next week or so. Just uh, get an update on what's happening with him. We're trying to get Chris Grassi on next week. We're going to try to get him on next week to uh, talk a little soccer as the schedule came out last week. So we're, we're working on getting him on. And uh, we're going to try to get Coach Swan on as well. Uh, so we'll update you on what's happening with soccer. So that's kind of what the game plan is here. Uh, I definitely want to talk to those uh, folks. But uh, speaking of the uh, the Dirty Birds and Corey Bird, I think we'll talk to um, Lindsay again on Wednesday from the Charleston Dirty Birds. So I'll, uh, I'll try to get maybe uh, – I'll try to work with her. Maybe Maybe we can get Corey on. Yeah, let's work on that. Let's work on getting Corey on. We'll we'll did it. We'll do that. You like how we sometimes have our our planning meetings on the show. Me and Christian, we're just looking back and forth. We just have our you're, you're in on it. You're in on it. We're just having our planning meeting right here. Just you know, he's taking notes down of what I want. Since this is like the only time we talk, he comes in. He says hello, Mr. Swan, and he goes away. And then I see him an hour later, and he's got everything ready for me to go. I mean, that's the perfect employee. I like it that way. 
I don't have to deal with him. I don't have to make, make nice with him. I'm joking, Christian. I'm joking. So that's kind of what we're working on uh, as far as the show is concerned. So uh, a lot going on. But yeah, I'll be watching hockey tonight, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the Pirates a little bit, see what's going on there. And then, of course, Twitter. we got to keep an eye on Twitter because I never know when Coach is going to, um, you know, Herd's going to get bigger. How many Steph Curry gifts are there? Have we run out yet? I mean, I guess there's going to be some new ones with the championship. So how many – I mean, can we get – can we get Steph like holding up like the four? So when Coach has a really good day, he could, he could go with that one. Can we get Can we get Dan on Twitter? I want Dan on Twitter. I want Dan doing. No, that's not happening. I'm just gonna walk that back right now. That's not happening at all. I would love it, though. What if we could get Dan on Twitter? Uh, get Dan on Twitter and TikTok. Where do you think Marshall Basketball could go if Marshall Basketball could jack its social media game up? Is it apples and oranges? I know we're comparing two different sports here, but what if Marshall Basketball social media game was on par with Marshall Football social media game right now? What if we could see that? I think the blueprint's there. And I'm not talking about I, I think the I think the team at Marshall does a fantastic job with everything that they're putting out. It's not that. It's not that I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the things that Coach Huff does. The things, you know, and you know, sometimes you get to see the, the behind the scenes, the video vignettes. Maybe you can see some more of that, or you get to see the fun side of the coaches a little bit more. I mean, I think some of the content they put out is great for all the sports. That's not what I'm saying. I want to see some personality. I want to see some more of what these coaches, yeah, I just want to see the fun side of the coaches. Because at the end of the day, we're here in the fun department. This is the this is the toy department of the sports department store we're hanging out in right now. I mean, really, the sports section of, of life right now is the toy department. It's it's the fun zone here, so I want to see that from these coaches. Always so stoic coaches are. Not not the football staff. I'll give them credit. The fun quote should, has increased completely. All right, we're out of time, by the way. We are done. We'll do it again tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. Have a great night, everyone. WRBC Huntington, W231BS Huntington, broadcasting from the Oscars Breakfast Burgers and Brew Studios. This is ESPN 94.1 and AM 930.